concerning the soon coming Messiah, Rabbi Tovia, concerning the soon coming Messiah, what are the top four tasks Messiah will complete? And considering the many different groups of Jews that are separated due to their varying observances and stringencies, will the Messiah bring clarity and a rod of correction which will bring the Jews Israel under one banner? Will he speak with God and perform wonders by the power of God like Moses, Elijah, etc.? Thank you. Mm. What, what are going to be the top four things that, that w so that we'll all, we'll all say, oh, that must be him because he did this, 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 and this. So, um, If I asked you who parted the Red Sea for the children of Israel for the Bnei Israel to pass through, what would the answer be to that question? I would have so, said Aaron or Moses or Aaron. If we can say that Moses parted the Red Sea for the children of Israel to pass through, then I can answer that question, map that question really easily. Of course, if you asked Moses who parted the Red Sea, Moses would say, I didn't do anything, and I only did what God told me. I stretched out my staff over the sea. And God did it. So when we say that the Messiah is going to do these things, I mean it in the way that Moses did. Moses didn't do anything by his own power. Mashiach, who is going to be the heir of the entire Davidic dynasty, of all the promises made to David HaMelech, blessed memory, are going to be fulfilled. But Mashiach himself has no power to do these things. It's HaKadosh Baruch the Almighty, blessed be his holy name, is doing everything. Just wanted to clarify that so people don't, get mixed up okay is that simple yes so what are the top four things that Mashiach is going to do meaning god's going to do hashem is going to perform it in the messianic age at the advent of coming Mashiach. what does it say explicitly in tanakh and the answer is very simple because it's everywhere he will bring about the universal knowledge of hashem as it says in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 9, the knowledge of God will cover the world as the water covers the sea. The only thing we're very specifically told that the Meshach will do, he will rebuke the nations. They will flow up to Yerushalayim. Ki mitziah taitzei tayru udevar Hashem Yerushalayim. For out of Zion will go forth the law, and the word of God will come out of Jerusalem. There will be enemies of God who will fight in the war against the children of Israel at the end of days, but they will be utterly destroyed. See Zechariah 14, actually 12, 13, 14. The whole chapter 12 is all about that, the final war. Ezekiel 38 and 39. It's explicit. Mechem is Gog Magog. Explicit. But everyone else will immediately recognize truth. This point is so important, I wouldn't dare raise anything else that would occur. Now, that answers the other question as well. Will there be any division among the children of Israel, being so the answer is no. Not only will the children of Israel, all who are survivors, there will be those who are rebelling against God, there will be Jews who do that too. You'll see in Isaiah 66, Zechariah 14, believe me, there are some nasty Jews. And that, but that's not who we're talking about here. But they will all be unified. In fact, even, this is another prophecy, even the, the lost tribes, meaning the tribes who are not loyal to the uh, the Davidic dynasty, but rather split off on their own and were ca carried away ultimately by the Assyrian Empire with finally utter destruction with Sanherev. So they will be reunited. The, the, the tribes that were carried off will re be restored. Ephraim, the lead tribe, will be restored to Judah See Ezekiel 37, where Ezekiel takes two sticks and one, he writes Judah and his companions, the other Ephraim and his companions, broke it apart and place them in your hand. They become one rod in your hand. So the ingathering of the exiles, the furthest most islands, the, the end of the world, the children of Israel will be restored. There will be building of a base, Hamigdash, the temple, the final temple that will stand forevermore in Jerusalem. And no one who is both uncircumcised the heart or the flesh, see Ezekiel 44 verse 9, will be able to even enter into the base Amigdash, into this final sanctuary of God. And there will be a worldwide peace in the world. 
Isaiah chapter 2, Nation will now lift up sword against nation, neither will they learn of war anymore. If you look out the window and you see war, if you turn on the news and you see battles, if you open a newspaper and you see that there are people who are at war with each other, you can be sure Mashiach did not come. And if someone says he did come, don't believe him. Look out the window, because when Mashiach comes, people are going to take their implements of war, the swords and the spears, and they're going to reshape them into implements of agriculture, plowshares and pruning hooks. Where does it say this? Read Isaiah chapter 2, the opening of chapter 2, and turn right now about. There's nothing I'm saying that's revolutionary. So there'll be a worldwide peace throughout the world. If you don't, if you see wars, you can be sure Mashiach is not here. Now, will a war trigger, be the antecedent event that will trigger the coming Mashiach? Yes, for sure. But that event, the final coming of Mashiach, will not. now will the Mashiach himself bring peace? Well, yes, because we are told in Isaiah two that he will, uh, that he will in fact rebuke the nations. In fact, we're told us in Zechariah chapter nine, verse ten, the nations will jettison war. Peace will fill the world as a result of the teachings of the Mashiach himself. There will be a resurrection, a physical resurrection of the dead. See Daniel chapter twelve, verse two. See Isaiah 26, verse 19. There will be a final state for those who are loyal and faithful to Hashem. Their bodies will be resurrected. These are all the things that will happen when the true Mashiach comes. As it turns out, none of these events occurred at the advent of Christianity. Nothing happened like this in the first century. There wasn't a universal knowledge of God, but as a result of the wars with Rome, the knowledge of God and the observance of the Mitzvah diminished as the children of Israel was spread into a, a bit that offense, a very deep, dark exile. There certainly was no worldwide peace as a result of these, of these wars. There was just battle everywhere. And the destruction of the Second Temple was a much more horrible battlefield than the destruction of the First Temple. The destruction of the First Temple, relatively speaking, was a cakewalk compared to the war with Rome. Why is not relevant here? Just I assure you, the destruction of the Second Temple, the war with Rome from 66 to 70, was a, a nightmare beyond your imagination. The Jews were not gathered in when the, at the advent of Christianity in the first century. They, were, they eventually would disperse throughout the empire and beyond. So those are things that the Mashiach will do. Again, Say the Mashiach will do in quotation marks because, of course, the Mashiach is a, will be a tzaddik. Please God, it will come soon. He's the direct descendant of David, Ben Achaben, son after son. And he is, he, she is going to speak to the nations, rebuke them, teach. The nation Torah will spread through all over the world. All these events will occur only through the power and might of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed be his name. May it be that we see the coming of the true Mashiach quickly in our time. Thank you for that important question. Thank <laughs> you. 